Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our council uh, tonight. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Um, uh, adoption of the agenda, we have two additions. The first one is 14.2, and it is AUMA policing. And then 14.3, which is Northern Lakes request for service. Or support, sorry. Any other additions? Could I have someone move the agenda then? Councillor Forrest, all in favor? Carried. Um, the January 11th regular council meeting. Was there any errors or omissions? In yes? Um, resolution 016 uh, says fund, broadband fund be provided to any interest willing to install, any interested party or? Correction. It says that letters of support for applications under the Universal Broadband Fund be provided to any interest willing, or I think it just should be interested party. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else? Any corrections, errors, omissions? Could I have someone move to accept them, please? I'll move as amended. Deputy Mayor moves as amended. All in favor? Carried. The minutes of the special council meeting. Any errors? If not, could I have someone move? Councillor Welke moves. All in favor? Carried. Uh, my report, did you have a chance to read it? Yes. <laughs> Any questions? Um, the Bistu Sub Regional Task Force, we do have the draft plan, but it can't be shared with anybody. We are working on it to make sure that it. Uh, meets the recommendations that the task force recommended and it should be out for public preview shortly. If there aren't any questions, could I have someone move my report? Sure. Councillor Morgan, all in favor? Carry. Deputy Mayor. On January 13th, I attended the city working group meeting in the morning and in the afternoon uh, did the Indigenous training workshop. On January 18th, I attended the special council meeting and on January the 19th, attended city workshop number four. Okay. Any questions from council? Councillor Anderson, thank you. On January 13th, I attended a special high-level library board meeting. Also on January 13th, I attended a Chamber of Commerce meeting. January 14th, I also attended a special high-level library board meeting. And on January 18th, a special council meeting. Questions? Okay, thank you. Councillor Forrest. January 18th, Special Council, that was it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Jessamine. Um, on the 12th, the airport staff group. The 13th was the Indigenous corporate training. Um, on the 19th was the workshop on the forest setting in the morning. And uh, the 22nd was the Child Advocacy Centre Steering Committee meeting. And how are you doing? Pardon me? And how is that going? It was our second meeting with the steering committee. Uh, I'm starting, I mean, we're starting to get a lot done. The uh, center is pretty well up and running. The, uh, we're just waiting for uh, the electronic equipment to come across the state to set up the interviews that uh, we need. Uh, and uh, just building relationships with the partners with the Northeast Tribal Council 
of the Red River and uh, the Health Center, but uh, it's, it's going to be good. Everybody's very interested and invested in it and, and actually got some working groups already working on a number of things, so that's good. Good. When do you start like inter like working with children? So we will, uh, we were required to have the room in place for oh. the interviews. Then the next big thing will be the training. So right now in the north here, the child services has no one in the in the slate area in the high level community that's trained. Uh, the RCMP hold the training. Uh, the <coughs> victim service has people. Child services has a number of people. Uh, we the child advocacy center as well plus. Uh, North Peace Tribal Council. So we're looking to get the special training put on here specifically for everybody. So we have to link it with the RCMP and get that done. With COVID, this training has been put on hold, um, but with the huge need here, we're hoping that they will uh, work with us on that. So what will your training do for you? It's uh, only for the, the uh, counselors. It's for the forensic interviews that are taking place with the children or the teenagers. Uh, the RCMP have already have two members locally here that are trained, and then it would be a child services or um, uh, North Peace Tribal Council, there's counselors. So what does a therapist do then? So in the, in the interview process? Yeah. Well, there's there would be the person in the interview room with the child or the teenager asking the questions, and then there there's uh, be an RCMP officer in the recording room. They're required to be in the recording room as well while the interviews taking place. So uh, those are the two main people that would be there. Mm. Typically, there'd actually be two people in the recording room: the RCMP officer and another therapist. Okay, thank you. Councillor Morgan. On January 13th, I attended a special library board meeting, the same as Councillor Anderson. And then again, uh, January 13th, I also attended the Indigenous Awareness Training. January 14th, I attended another special library board meeting. Um, on January 18th, I attended the special council meeting, and on January 21st, I attended a Mackenzie Frontier Tourism meeting. And that is all. So did you read the email tonight about Mackenzie Frontier Tourism? The announcement that we got money from Travel Alberta? Yeah. I did see that. That's very exciting. Yeah. You didn't how say much how much. It? No, I can't. I was excited we got money, but it doesn't say yeah. how much we got, so I didn't know how excited to get. Uh, Councillor Welke. Um, January 13th, I attended the Indigenous Awareness Training. Uh, January 14th, I helped uh, conduct interviews with the FASD Society for a new position being created of Executive Assistant Director for the for the FAS FASC Society, and there were uh, a few candidates that we that we interviewed, and we're still in the deciding process. And the 18th of January, I attended the uh, council special meeting. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Could I some move the reports, please? Councillor Anderson. All in favor? <clears throat> Moving on to the administrative reports, the action list. Is there anything on the action list that you want to discuss? Okay, if someone move the action list then. Councillor Anderson, all in favor? <clears throat> Carried. Uh, the departmental reports. CEO. Madam Mayor, Council, good evening. Good evening. Um, the administrative reports are in your, or the monthly report to Council is in your package. Uh, we'll have each of uh, the senior administration come forward to give their individual reports. So I'll start with the general administration. I'll also do the report for the municipal secretary and uh, health and safety. 
Uh, most of my month was occupied in December uh, with a couple of fairly large items. One was a complete cover-to-cover -cover review of the land use bylaw, which you get to see again this evening. Um, the, there was a bunch of work done with Boreal Housing because of your appointment of myself to that board, both with uh, Mackenzie House and with the Heimstead Lodge. In the case of Mackenzie House, uh, we had asked the board to open up rooms to the nursing students, or actually it's uh, health professional students that are working uh, both in at the Northwest Health Centre, but we also have some working at St. Teresa's in Fort Vermillion. So the other day we had six nursing students, a physiotherapy student, and an occupational therapist student up um, that are doing practicums here. The practicums are for up to three months in length. So we're renting out the vacant rooms at Mackenzie House to those students while they're here. Uh, the Heimstead Lodge, there was uh, the, the Creek Municipal Nursing Association, who is actually the owner of that facility, has requested that facility back to operate as a private lodge, and the Royal Housing has commenced the work on that. There's a meeting this week with the government departments to get details on how that transfer will take place. Um, and the other part, of course, was the uh, work uh, with the council on the regional service sharing agreement and extension, possible extension of that document with the council. Uh, the COVID kept us busy again in December. Uh, part of that resulted in a lockdown of the office again and a request to the public to phone in or make appointments um, for services. That actually uh, is well received. Uh, we have no complaints with that. People are quite compliant. I think we're getting used to that now after almost a year. Um, but there's been a number of other things, of course, that's changed some of our orders in the way we do business as well internally. Um, the municipal secretary side of things, uh, that, that, depart, or that position has been kept mainly busy with preparation for the 2020, uh, 2021 municipal elections, which nominations were open as of the first day that the office was open, which was January the 4th. And uh, anyone can pick up a nomination form at any time now for the, over the next nine months. Uh, we have more details on how that process works on the town's website. Uh, and tomorrow, it'll, it'll be posted on tomorrow. And then uh, uh, renewal of all the airport leases, of which there are actually quite a few. That was a, that was a December job. Is there any question just on general men before I go on to health and safety? Um, Mr. McLean will be at an upcoming meeting with an annual report on the health and safety actions of the Health and Safety Committee and our health and safety statistics. Uh, but for tonight, this is just December's. In the month of December, there were five incidents, uh, one injury with no lost time, two close calls, one damage and one act of vandalism. Um, the, we, the audit action plan for health and safety was completed and approved by myself, the CAO, um, in December. And the Joint Workplace Health and Safety Committee is currently uh, taking psychological first aid courses to help boost, boost mental health awareness within it. And some of you will know that as mental health first aid. So that's the entire committee is working on taking that training. Um, other than that, that's, and of course, COVID kept Mark as busy as well because of all of the orders and the issues that have arisen out of the COVID and the new public health order. Any questions? <clears throat> yes. Uh, I know on the, uh, the last update on the uh, the home in Wood Creek there, of them taking over the mm -hmm. private, uh, there was mention of people looking to leave. Like, do we have confirmation if there will, are going to be people moving out that aren't from that community? Or? That'll be part of the process as we go along. There, there's, a, there's a considerable amount of notice that appears to need to be given first two um, seniors in housing over the transfer of the lodge back to private ownership, um, but also to Alberta Health Services who provide services in there. So that contract also goes year to year. Um, we are working on putting the systems in place at McKenzie House uh, that will be needed by some of the seniors, especially the higher need seniors. So we expect a lot of that should be in place by the time um, the transfer is, if there are people who would uh, prefer, and of course, the option there too is there are people from this side of the region that would prefer to come to high level once Mackenzie House is, uh, has that ability for their care as well. So, yeah, so that'll be worked on as part of the process. 
it could take up to six months for the uh, for the minister to sign off on it, and it could take up to a year or more for Alberta Health Services mm -hmm. to decide whether they're going to give a contract or not. So, so it's not like a snap thing. The meetings will be exciting as you go forward. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of paperwork and a lot of meetings, yes. A lot of paperwork. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'll ask Ms. Phillips to come up and give the report from the Finance Department. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, for the Finance Department, um, we've been pretty busy with year end processes for. Um, um, year-end audit scheduled in March so we've been busy prepping for that and for the next few months we will will continue that um, December 7th council approved the 2021 capital budget and 2021 interim operating budget as presented and on the 8th the new provincial restrictions were released which resulted in council making the decision to postpone the December penalties until January 12th and so far, we haven't heard any complaints. I feel like it was very good feedback from everybody um, coming from AR and um, tax and utilities. Um, and then I just wanted to put an update in there that we've been, um, we updated our POS systems um, throughout the town. And so far, everything's been running successful with them. Um, a major component of that was a lot of our utilities and tax payments are taken by credit card payment. So Tim would sit there with a list of credit card numbers and manually put them in. So now we have the option of doing an online processing so he could include all of those payments in and process it in a more timely manner than, than standing there for part of the day. Um, but yes, yeah, so far everything's been busy in December with your end. Any questions? Question? No, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, mine is pretty short and sweet. IT systems for the month of December were stable, no critical disruptions to any of the operations. We weren't engaged in any critical kind of work. Um, on the HR element, um, we had no new vacancies to report. Uh, the interviews were conducted for the sports complex operator vacancies that we did have, um, and appointments were made in January, but I will give you more of that for the next uh, report. We currently are holding one open protected position, um, being covered by acting staff, and news on that is that that. Uh, staff members should be returning at the beginning of February. That's it from my side. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, December was uh, was a pretty busy one. Uh, completed the first draft of the land use bylaw. I believe it was Christmas Eve. We got that out for uh, review. Um, been working on the space at risk uh, state of the region report. That's taken quite a, a lot of time up in uh, December there. So just going over the drafts from the consultants and filling any data gaps that are still um, evident. Um, and then just had some inquiries here in town on some commercial um, uh, projects. So I've been doing a bit of research on that during December and into January. Our bylaw enforcement officer completed four courses from the Canadian Police Knowledge Network and that was basically uh, allows her to uh, do tickets under provincial acts in regards to land use bylaw and uh, community standards. Um, so those four courses were done and then the year-end business licensing was complete and all the new certificates went out with invoicing and we also put in uh, the new form uh, with one page for people to fill out to consent uh, for their business information to go to the chamber 
So at the end of this month, we'll be sending all those off. We had quite a few come back, which was good. Uh, and then just business as usual with uh, some of the patrols for garbage and snow removal and uh, the uh, fire permits as well, just uh, monitoring those burns and doing an inspection. And then I just provided a couple of tables for uh, the stats for development permits and safety codes for 2020 and 2019. So the number of permits in each category totals and then uh, the, the uh, permit total value for development permits, that's the project value that people fill in on the form. Um, and then for the safety codes, the values there are based on the project value, it's a fee per X amount. Um, and those have just been provided for each of those permits as well. And then just a few notes at the bottom, uh, some highlights on those stats between the two years. The uh, project value is a lot higher in 2019 because it included the new pellet plant and the uh, grain elevator. And then the commercial side for 2020 was the uh, new park plaza uh, up on 97th Street and the renovation of the uh, executive house suites as well. And then for residential, most of the permits have been for place, uh, placements or improvements to mobile homes over the both, both of the years. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions of anybody? You said you had some inquiries lately from? Yes. <laughs> I can't give who, um, but <laughs> the site's in question, and we did actually learn some new information as well for the former uh, Petro Canada fuel station, so that's north of the museum. There's two vacant lots there. Uh, apparently, they've been fully remediated, and they have reclamation certificates, and they are being marketed for sale out of Montreal with uh, Jones Lang LaSalle. And the only issue I've come across, uh, there is a restricted covenant on there as well, and it's for 10 years, I think it's till 2026, that no gas station's allowed to go there. And I'm not sure if that's um, because of the remediation work or not. However, cannot get a, a hold of the um, reclamation work or the assessment, the environmental assessment, until they're sold, which I think is odd. So we're going to try and still work on that end to get a copy of those, but they are being marketed, so that's one. And then That's Shell, isn't it, not Petrocan? Oh, sorry, is that what I said? Yes, sorry, uh, the former Shell station, sorry. Oops. <laughs> Had the wrong one in my mind. But yes, that was primarily one, and then looking at other options for uh, the same client. Any other? Same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, <coughs> Grand Council. Uh, I just wanted to highlight three things that happened uh, in the month of December in terms of um, community communication. The beginning of December, we had a lot of messaging around face masks, face coverings, face coverings by law, um, and then the eventual move by the province to incorporate it into the public health order, uh, the result of which was that it, um, it shifted responsibility away from uh, administration and onto AHS and the RCMP, so it was like a release valve for us. It kind of calmed things down quite a bit, uh, almost immediately. <coughs> Um, one of the things we did in order to try and lift the spirits of local residents was that we incorporated um, town staff and we put together a Christmas video and it was very well received as far as we could tell there were a lot of really good comments and a lot of really good shares um, and it became part of a larger kind of holiday weekend that I think the community really appreciated something that everybody kind of needed after all the stress and everything that was going on. Um, and then uh, the third thing I wanted to highlight was uh, making use of the extensive expertise of the Director of Community Services. We put together a four-page brochure on the planned multi-purpose facility that we decided on. 
multi-purpose. <laughs> um, there was some discussion about what we were calling it. Uh, but uh, we developed this four-page brochure, and the point of the brochure really was to provide information to different levels of government. Um, so it hasn't been publicly released yet, but I think that is kind of in the works at some point in the near future. <coughs> and that's about it. Questions? Thank you. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. Good evening. <clears throat> I think I should put a paper bag over my head because I seem to be allergic to masks. So oh, is that? Right? Yeah. I thought you just come back from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be just as bad. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so it seems funny talking about Christmas, but uh, this is December report, so the town participated in the Christmas reverse parade, so operations staff and community services staff put together a gingerbread uh, houseboat, and, uh, and they staffed the, the, staffed the float as well, and it was, uh, it was a really good event. It was really interesting doing the reverse parade. Um, the arena staff, we basically closed since about mid-December, so the staff have been working on a variety of things. One of the things we've done is expanded our service level with the uh, Jubilee Skate Path and uh, the outdoor rink. So seven days a week they've been working on it and keeping it up So because we've had so much more use than we would have under normal circumstances. And they've also been working on um, inside the arena, stripping waxing floors and all the things we didn't get done prior to. So it's... Uh, all ready to go if that ever happened. Um, the pool they had the facility health uh, checkups. We had automated aquatics come in. They try and get this done uh, annually and they look at all the chemical filtration systems. One of the things that came up is um, uh, they did release a hot tub entrapment report. So that's a policy that came into effect about two years ago where um, any, all the entrapment is, uh, is looked at by um, public health and because that's been an issue. So that's like, um, you know, get the long hair, get sucked in the bottom and then drown. So anyway, um, so we'll be coming back to council with uh, some different options and uh, for how we can uh, rectify uh, one of the issues that we could possibly have in the hot tub. FCSS, um, we're still continuing the COVID assistance lines. We're still getting calls for that and helping. Um, in December, we had uh, eight clients. So um, that's still, still being a help. Uh, with that, the arena and pool staff help too with deliveries and that sort of thing. Um, and of course, other than Groovy Kids, all our programs we turn virtual. Just to give an idea of some of the statistics, we had um, for New Year's Eve, we had 464 people register and we handed out 125 bags. Um, for the tourism, for the museum, for their nights on lights, they had 733 people register and they gave out 177 Christmas cruise goodie bags. So, um, so we have been affecting quite a few people. And we opened the gift shop by appointments only for the museum and it, was, it really turned out well. We ended up, we had uh, over 15 shoppers and sold about $1,200 worth of items. So that was really successful too. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions? Um, no? Thank you. I, I, oh, sorry. I'd just like to make the comment that uh, I, I do appreciate all the work going into the ice surfaces, and it's great to see the uh, amount of people that are using them. It's, it's actually really exciting to see, and uh, my daughter actually can throw lots on them, so I appreciate that. I'll definitely pass that on to other old staff. I was walking down the path thinking, wouldn't it be great if we did that to our entire path? <laughs> <laughs> we could skate the entire perimeter of town. It'd be a great liability. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Strong, do you give the operation people? Get me down there. <laughs> Fiscally responsible. Do it. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, <clears throat> mine kind of covers a little bit of November and December. We did a November report. Um, year end, the November, December, I uh, brought it up earlier, but our 92nd Street water project is complete and up and running right now, as well as the Bushy River Regional Water Line. Uh, it's good to see both those projects uh, functioning now, and we have two uh, 
uh, res uh, service connections on it already, so uh, we're getting water up to the farthest end of town. Uh, part of our uh, major project at the water plant that I've been working on is a upgrades, looking at our upgrades. Uh, the water plant has hit its 20 year design history, so those of us who've been here for a while, it's now 20 years old. We're focused on uh, enhancing our treatment capabilities, looking at a variety of different products and processes. Uh, we did the chlorine dioxide trial, which proved ineffective. It was, it's good to know that it worked or didn't work. Uh, we're carrying on with that. We're working on some new uh, pilots, I guess, working on. And the big one for us now is our water modeling project. So in the summer of 2019, some of this in 2020, we went out and flow tested every single fire hydrant in town to find out its capability to produce water. That data will be used in a water modeling project, which we'll be able to do a, a hydrological study or uh, look at the whole community where we have fire protection, where we have areas that may need to be enhancement and the overall capability of pumping. When the water plant was upgraded 20 years ago, the distribution system, pumping systems, wasn't touched. It wasn't part of the upgrade. So now that system is four years old, so we're going to focus a lot of, uh, lot of time on it. If the water plant goes down, at least we can still produce water. It's critical, especially for fire. Um, the 2019 fire showed us some areas we could improve upon and some unique areas we're going to work on with the province to see if we can add it for uh, additional fire protection. And a long-winded on that part. Um, <clears throat> the airport, uh, winter operations have been pretty normal there. There has been a few challenging times with freezing rain. We used up a lot of our ice melt products. We have since replaced those. Uh, we do have a new civil aviation inspector for our area. His name is Greg Blast. Uh, we haven't met with him yet. I'm sure uh, we'll be working with him and Lumex and Luke in the near future. Uh, we've applied, uh, we continue to wait for our application for ACAP funding from the federal government. Uh, they announced that it's now up to 138 million instead of 38 million. So hopefully the new uh, plow truck and sander will be on that list and we're gonna put forward a new loader request also as this funding is gonna expire in 2023. So we'll keep pushing applications forward and hopefully we'll get funding on those projects. So they've raised it over 100 million? Yes. But also we're committing with uh, major airports all across Canada, so that could be pretty small. Well, well major small airports. <laughs> there is a lot of uh, small airports within Canada that are mm -hmm. equivalent or larger than us. Uh, this, the other big thing for the airport has been the NAV Canada level of service study we've been working on. Apparently the uh, consultation period has now ended. Uh, they were expecting late February, early March but because they uh, failed to consult with their NAV Canada staff and inform them there'd be the changes to the level of service, they're gonna have to work with them before they make any announcements on what they may or may not be doing. So there is a union issue they have to deal with. Uh, Public Works, if you'll know, that our focus has been uh, snow removal. Uh, before that, actually, we, uh, we were busy in November, we did the banners of remembrance, that was really good, we got those up and then we took those down in December and put up all our Christmas lights. Our, our Christmas tree is the, the salvage Christmas tree that we used to have at the town hall here many years ago. It's really starting to see where we're going to try and push that into the 2022 budget and look at upgrading it. Uh, again, snow removal has been really pretty steady. Uh, when we're not taking snow off, we're putting salt down. I know it's getting really, again, really icy again this week. So. Our uh, snow storage is the highest it's been in quite a few years. I think we're on our third tier of our pile, so and this week we'll have a cat in again to level it off to go even higher. So it's been quite a bit of snow removal. Uh, mechanics have been busy doing regular maintenance. Our snow blower has failed a couple of times, and we go back to the conventional system. I, I mean, we do have the budget to prove, so we are working on replacing that snow blower sooner than later. Uh, utility is not too bad, other than the work at the water plant. Uh, we did have two fire hydrants that were damaged. They were ran into by bobcats. One, we uh, found how it was caused, and that, that cost will be going back to the owner or to the contractor. Uh, and the other one, we have been unable to determine who hit it, but it, it, it was hit with a bobcat. So uh, they are a costly item, and if people run into them, the minimum bill will be $1,000. 
the, uh, we had a power outage on Christmas Day. Uh, I spent eight hours at the water plant. The outage was actually in our main control system. We had a catastrophic fail. Uh, luckily, our programmer in Edmonton was able to work with us and we got it back up and running. Uh, there was a very short outage for water and we relied on our backup manual systems to continue pumping. Luckily, you had nowhere to go Christmas Day. Oh, I had a wonderful <laughs> Christmas dinner planned for myself, a nice king crab dinner, but I, I had that the next day. <laughs> and then we're into our winter maintenance. Any questions? I, I still can't get over them raising the uh, A cap to a hundred million dollars. Yeah, we're very surprised and very happy and hopefully we get a very large amount of it. Uh, there has been a consistent shortage within the second tier, so there's three tiers of basic funding and the mm -hmm. first one is usually runways and lighting and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. The equipment side is usually underfunded, so uh, maybe they're trying to bring money into uh, get those underfunded areas filled. That's your sander sweepers and all the operational mm -hmm. equipment. I still don't know. Hmm. Yes. With the COVID hit and they deferred that entire program last year though, so this is sort of a double year or a catch up year? Yeah, I'm not too sure if they deferred it, but the last application for the plow truck, they just said they were over, over uh, requested. So because it was a tier two request that it would be put onto the list for the following year or the year after. And so maybe they're realizing that there's more tier two requests that are getting pushed back some of these major projects, like our paving project the uh, previous years, are taking up too much of the funds. We're hoping. All right, thank you. Yes, cross your fingers. Yeah, it's just test page, so it's good time. Glad we can stretch it out a little bit. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, so, protective services uh, report for December. Uh, December 2020, our police officers conducted uh, 25 investigations, received 38 calls for service to the dispatch area. Um, out of that, uh, they had four arrests and 12 traffic safety investigations. Um, some of those investigations did include public health uh, order investigations, and uh, they worked actually really closely through those first couple of weeks of the restriction announcements uh, with our local environmental and public health investigators on investigations in the community. Um, we did not lay any charges in December ourselves. Uh, most anything that was dealt with locally was dealt with our public health inspectors. Um, intelligence gathered by our peace officers uh, working with the RCMP, they provided information to the RCMP, resulted in the arrest of one uh, person uh, operating a motor vehicle while in possession and under the influence of methamphetamines. We are starting to see uh, a little bit of more methamphetamine use uh, in the community in the last little while, so that is a kind of a troubling uh, trend that we're starting to uh, to see. Um, you know, even on our side of the of the house, the, the emergency response side, we're actually we've been to a couple of calls involving methamphetamines in the last uh, in the last month or so, um, and. Uh, we were operating at reduced capacity. Uh, we have one uh, peace officer off right now. Um, emergency management, uh, we have no activations. Uh, as council is aware, working really close with the Denny Top First Nation uh, through the study program on the regional emergency plan uh, with, uh, with the First Nation. Uh, we just started phase three in December. It's under well underway now. Uh, consultations are starting uh, this week. Um, and uh, there's currently um, about 20 people between the two the town of Heddle and Denny Todd taking uh, some online training right now. And we did get the grant uh, in just in time uh, for the ACP grant for the regional plan for phase four. Um, so we applied for $70,000 under that grant, uh, which covers, um, well, approximately 70% of the project. So uh, we'll see where, uh, where that goes. Um, on the fire department side, uh, we had a uh, fairly busy December. We're starting to get up to and close to pre-pandemic call levels again as things start to normalize in terms of public uh, you know we're starting to see our calls rise we're still on a reduced call uh, response for um, for medical we have been since since last spring we we we're one of the organizations that have not gone back to our pre-pandemic call response matrix um, just because the cases were pretty steady throughout 2020 
So, um, so we're still on the reduced calls, and even that, with that, we're still at 33 calls in December, and we're finding our medical calls, our acuity is much higher, so our, our members are responding to a slightly lower amount of medical calls, but a higher acuity in terms of higher seriousness. So, um, so out of those 33 calls, we did have a structure fire call uh, that started out as an automatic alarm to a local uh, retail store on Christmas Eve. Um, we got there, there's smoke in the building, we contained the fire to a boiler room in the upstairs of the building. Uh, really minimal damage. Um, we had four motor vehicle collisions in, in December and uh, one residential fire call for a wood pellet stove that had faulted, uh, blocked off and filled the house full of smoke just before Christmas as well. Um, and our uh, firefighters recertified all their health care provider CPR in December. Uh, they completed their vehicle rescue module with a very difficult five vehicle motor vehicle collision scenario compliments of me. And um, then uh, of course with the restrictions coming out in mid-December, uh, the fire department transitioned to Zoom training sessions to reduce exposure in the fire hall. And we've been on online training since, since then. So um, we're hoping to get back into that in the next couple of weeks. We'll see how things uh, come out. And uh, our WUI program, they're just doing final edits and plans. We're working on the final report uh, now. And uh, December, uh, they burned 40 piles on our fire smart area, the two, uh, two guys who were on the team. And uh, they're doing, uh, they have some more planned uh, for the next, uh, throughout the winter to get it all done. There's still probably 100 to 150 piles out there yet. You read my mind, material. I was going to ask. I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of wood out there yet. So they're doing about 20 pounds a day when they're out there burning. So. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Madam Mayor, I have city administrative report for the month of December. Thank you. Could I have someone move to accept the report? The report. Councillor Welke, all in favor? Carried. 10.3 is a briefing note. Read the frostable. Madam Mayor, Ms. Phillips will give that report. Ms. Morales will give that report. So, with, um, with Frostable, it was our sixth annual, sixth annual Frostable, and uh, normally having everything in Centennial Park. We realized that probably wouldn't fall within COVID restrictions unless they were totally lifted. So we tried to look at doing something differently. So what we've come up with is, first of all, we're going to run it um, a little bit later in February and for nine days. So it's going to run from Saturday all the way to the following Sunday. And we're going to have different um, interactive um, ice things at, uh, at the various parks. So at Canfor Park, we're going to have a 30-foot ice slide. Um, at Centennial Park, Snow Maze. Uh, Jubilee Park, we're going to have an interactive uh, snow sculpture. And of course, we have the ice path there as well. And then at Community Park, we're going to have a snow castle picture wall. So it'll be like an actual wall of a castle with the holes for windows and a door where the family can put, like, put their faces and take pictures and that sort of thing. In addition to that, we're going to have contests for snow carving, for snowmen, for the little kids, and for sculptures for adults in their front yards. Um, and then there's going to be a virtual hot buns run um, in partnership with this. Um, yeah, so we just wanted to let uh, uh, council know, see if there was any feedback. But basically, I think this way we'll keep people um, in various areas, still be able to keep the community active, and uh, we'll still be bringing in the um, uh, uh, Ice on White Festival Society to help with this all. They'll come in just after Family Day, so on the 17th. And as soon as each item is ready, we'll announce it so people can start using it. So we'll start on the ice slide first and then work through until we have all the parks going. What is the virtual hot buns run? <laughs> you run virtually? <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that. I don't have the details. Possibly Councillor Morgan might have more details. Do you have any no. details? We set up a run and you register uh, online and then you go over and you run by yourself rather than getting all of the group and then report back with a picture of yourself when you finish. And we've also been uh, seeking sponsorship, so we did this within our budget, but we also thought we could expand and we've already received um, 
a fairly healthy sponsor and we're hoping to get a few more which we'll announce shortly and that's going to allow us to open up more contests to get more and more people involved so so we're really we're really excited about that mm -hmm. sounds sounds like it'll be fun i think so and just being in different parts it, it's interesting yeah hope so yeah thank you any other questions Look forward to more detail. Where's the virtual hot dog station? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll need our communications uh, officer to figure that one out. Virtual mini donut. Virtual beer garden. Yeah. That's in the ice cap. All right. Um, well, uh, old business, we have the RFD for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Ms. Garvin will present that request for decision. Okay. <clears throat> Hello again. Uh, so, this is a bit of an unfortunate one. Uh, so, we came in December and asked for a resolution uh, for Council to support an application to FCM for our. Um, asset management uh, program and at the time I was working with uh, the project manager that we're doing the strategy with and now we're working with the grant people and I'm unsure yet, I'll find out on Thursday when I meet with them, uh, whether this has been a change since the new application opened or if it was always supposed to be this way and we needed to include the detail of the activities and the amount of money that the town's putting towards the application. Um, when you maximise the grant, which is the $50,000, the minimum that the municipality has to put in is 12500 but the town's already budgeted twenty. and I guess where BSD is coming from is we should emphasise that we're doing more than the bare minimum, and it's a very competitive process. Uh, it's been open, I guess, almost a week now, and we want to get our application in ASAP. We received the strategy on Friday evening, so I went through it a little bit uh, this morning and uh, on Friday night and we've got a lot of work to do, 37 recommendations <laughs> across all departments over three years. So it's going to be a lot of work. Um, we, we're going to meet tomorrow and have a look at those. Um, but this is basically to clean up uh, the resolution we need for the application. Is two resolutions I'm asking for is to rescind the one from December 7th, the 453-20, and then to pass the new one, which is the uh, three parts there, which includes um, uh, sending a submission, the activities we'll be doing this year, and then the amount of money that the town's putting towards the initiative. Is there any questions? I'll move to rescind resolution 453-20. Any questions about that? All in favor? Carry. <coughs> Somebody want to move? Motion number two. Councillor Forrest. Any questions? All in favor? Carry. Under new business, we have the municipal library appointment. Uh, Madam Mayor, at a special meeting of January 14th, 2021, the Town of Hilo Library Board uh, passed a motion requesting the Town Council reappoint Ms. Shawnee Jessamine to the Hilo Library Board. Any questions? Someone want to make that appointment? Councillor Morgan? Yes? I have a question for you on there. Did, there's no term in that, so the term is usually three years? Three year term. Okay, thank you. Councillor Morgan, all in favor? Carried. Number 13 to the RFD leasing town owned land. <laughs> <coughs> So this was a, initially would have been a rising report from the committee by the meeting. However, it's been a slight change. Um, so since uh, we met at the committee the whole last Monday, um, 
the consultant working on behalf of the utility company, whereas looking for a secondary site in case the first one um, doesn't work out. And we as administration were just looking in general, and it, this isn't an application again for the, the tower, this is options for multiple third party utilities. And we identified, and right now it doesn't uh, look great, it's the public works yard. However, if we were to approve this uh, lot for uh, leasing to third party utilities, that would involve some work um, with the lot around it, so a bit of taking the chunk out, amalgamating to make the lot bigger, um, to come more westward, I guess. So the plan number would change, um, but this was something that we put forward as a secondary option, and the request is to approve both sites for third party utility companies for leasing town on land. So why do we need a secondary? Well, for the proposed application. The it's like they mapped out this yellow thing. Yes. So there, so for, for the tower, that, I mean, that hasn't been submitted yet, but for that one, their search area is the red line. Uh, so technically, the, um, the public works yard is just outside of there. Um, but if we wanted to allow uh, option to lease on that land, it would involve some work taking uh, some land out of where that yellow block is and amalgamating it into the public square. So lot. when they search these areas, what all do they look for? Well, initially the blue uh, rectangle yeah. was to, that was their ideal area to mitigate um, complaints that they've received uh, and they defined that that area would be the best place to put it. I mean, when that first initially came in, um, we said no, even though um, telecommunication structures are discretionary in all uses. So they expanded it to the red area, but they want to stay away from wetter areas and the yellow would be wet um, and get closer to power. So, I mean, at the committee of the whole, the uh, Plan 142TR uh, was approved as an option, mm -hmm. and we, they, they do need to look at more than one site, but again, this, this decision isn't approving the tower, it's just providing lots as options. So <coughs> we looked in the general area um, that could accommodate that same um, inquiry and came up with this option. Madam Mayor, if I may. So we did have um, Ms. Gavin, Mr. Schroeder, and I met today. And if you look on the very eastern portion of the yellow, it, it butts up against the raw water reservoir. So that area between the raw water reservoir and the fire guard that has been cleared there could be made available for utilities um, if they had objections to building on that other site. So we just want to give them a backup, and I think it wouldn't take much work to allow that utilities tower or telecommunication towers in that area. That would also be further away from some of the residential uses. Yeah, I'm just wondering why or what specifically they need because we have such crappy internet and that's tough to hear. Like, do they have to be closer to the people or no obstructions in the way? Yeah, or? I mean, they came up with the search area for a reason. Well, but, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm trying to get across. Yeah, so if we did um, make uh, the public works yard lot larger, we would get into that red area, potentially. So this is basically, they're required um, when they do this proposal to do their own public consultation. It's quite extensive. There's a whole federal process that they have to go through. If they uh, receive quite a lot of uh, concern um, from the public or other stakeholders about the location on Plan 142 TR, um, they always want to have a secondary backup, mm -hmm. right? So that option would keep them within their search area, but further back from residential uses is really where we came from. They're looking at other sites, other sites that they um, proposed were the RCMP, the fire hall, or the um, 
Christian fellowship church, mm -hmm. I believe. So um, this was the, not, it's not really a compromise because the proposal's not even in yet. It's just an inquiry at this point, but they have to come up with two sites, go back to the utility provider, say this is what we have, and then that triggers them to do their public consultation prior to submitting a development permit application to the town. Any other questions? Well, yes. I was just wondering, is it is it easier to just expand the public works lot, or, or would, could you just create a new lot that could be utilized then? Or? Yeah, like either or. I mean, we own all of that land. So. Or would it, if it didn't get used for this purpose, then it would then the public works lot would be larger for its own purposes too, then. We wouldn't have to do an environmental study, would we? <laughs> well, no. to expand that lot? No? <coughs> Promise? <laughs> I'll move alternative one. There's salt. No, there should be nothing on that okay. side. Not on the area west of the public works. Madam Mayor, that's all just tree land. Okay. Is there any other questions? Okay. Deputy Mayor moves. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, Vault Media. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Ms. Wolf will take the next two items on the agenda. Uh, present the next two items. had uh, presented um, a report to council back in October where we discussed tourism strategy plan and uh, current publications and at that time um, council had passed a motion that um, we were going to cancel our current publications uh, and then in early January uh, Vault Media, they operate as Move Up Magazine, uh, provided a presentation to council on the value of their publication and they requested that the town continue with the publication and at that time, council felt that um, there should be a discussion take place, which uh, happened last week at the Committee of the Whole. Um, as a result, council discussed continuing to make a financial contribution to Move Up Magazine for, uh, to continue with half a page on a quarterly basis um, for $4,800 annually with 400 copies to be distributed um, to the town for distribution. Um, so uh, administration would require a motion to move that forward. This is a rising report. Uh, just one suggestion, or just to it for what it is, but maybe those people that request, maybe we could put something out on our Facebook page or something that uh, copies of Move Up Magazine would be made available at the museum and at the town for those that like to receive them in their mailbox. We'll find, we'll find other ways to distribute yeah. it around town, but we can let people know where they could find them if they want. Okay. Is there any other questions about this? Okay. Could I have someone move? I'll make the motion for alternative one. Councillor Welke, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. N number 13.4. Okay, for the Tourism Enhancement Grant. So we had redeveloped our Tourism, tourism Enhancement Grant so that the committee was dissolved and we were presenting grants four times a year. Um, we had a grant um, that was brought forward from the, um, from the uh, MFTA. It's attached to your package. Um, this particular grant um, is, was supposed to be for events, but uh, they applied for tourism promotion. It doesn't really fit an evaluation matrix that we had developed, and administration is therefore recommending that we do not fund this application through the Enhancement Fund grant. This was also a rising report from Committee of Whole. Could I have a motion, please? I'll move alternative one. Councillor Forrest. All in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Madam yep, Madam the RFP 
any further bylaw? Ms. Gavin will present the information for first reading of the land use bylaw. You own this agenda. <laughs> Last time tonight. <laughs> so I've put together uh, just a quick summary of uh, everything we've been doing since last spring, uh, since we took this on. Um, and just a bit of a summary of the types of public engagement we've done, from videos to one-pagers, lots of uh, online uh, social media. We've had hard copies available for people to pick up. Lots of letters were sent out um, regarding rezonings and changes to discretionary use uh, in the R2 land use district. Um, and we've done, I think, before reviews now, so the last one was done uh, in the last couple of weeks here, uh, just to catch any last minute changes. Um, what I wanted to focus on uh, today was just that for the month of February, uh, for four weeks, we'll be going to do um, more public consultation, so requesting that the public hearing date be put out six weeks. Um, so each week uh, on social media we'll just probably have a post on the Monday just having uh, highlights where people can get more information when the public hearing date is. Um, hard copies again will be available, staff will be available to discuss any uh, concerns or changes. Uh, letters will go out um, to people with existing residential uses within the industrial area advising the proposed changes um, to that because that was a, the only really significant change from the December version to this one. Um, the newspaper will have ads as well and then everything uh, in accordance for the public hearing date for the MGA and um, the annual advertisement bylaw will be sent out as well. Um, so yeah, this is a request for first reading of the land use bylaw and to set a public hearing date for March 8th of 2021. Is there any questions about the bylaw? Any changes that any of you? Okay, could I have someone make the motion then? I'll move the recommendation. Okay. Councillor Morgan moves the first reading of the bylaw for March 8th hearing date. All in favor? Carry. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Correspondence for action um, has been added. There is a, uh, a president summit on policing and these events will take place um, on two Zoom sessions, one February 4th from 4 to 6.30, and one February 17th from 3 to 6, and that one is a, on establishing a provincial police force. And the first one on February, February 4th is updates on the Police Act and the work of the Police Advisory Board. If you wish to attend these sessions, there is a link. Um, I can send it to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can get it out to all. Okay. Does do you have the? Uh, we have the email. From okay. The yeah. So if you wish to attend that, let um, let Sandra know, and she will send the link to you. And the other one is the Northern Lakes. Uh, it's a request. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, can we get a motion for any of the councillors who wish oh, to attend today? Can. can I get a motion for anybody that wishes to attend? To attend? Are you making oh. that motion? Or are you just <laughs> Councillor Morgan? Forest, but I'll do it. All in favor? Carried. And the uh, next one is Northern Lakes. Uh, uh, email link today from Tracy Solkin. And they're asking for our support as a key member or a stakeholder of this region in drafting a letter to the Minister of Advanced Education um, to continue on the path that they're on. What they want to do 
is maybe transform the boards into larger boards. And we've seen how that has worked for health. Uh, we sure hate to lose our northern campuses to something like Red Deer and, um, and Edmonton running them. So uh, they're requesting our support with an email. Is there any questions about it? So they want to amalgamate boards like they did housing boards, like they've done <coughs> health boards, like they're trying to do to school boards probably. Oh, they did that a few years ago. Yeah. So this is another one, and we will lose probably a lot of our northern northern campuses if that's the case. And these northern campuses are crucial to um, students from our area that uh, either cannot afford to run two households, so they you know can live in high level and attend school and get an education. So. I think it's pretty important that we support it. Any questions? Could I get a motion? Councillor Forrest. Forrest moves that we send a letter of support. All in favor? Carried. So, uh, correspondence for information. Um, does someone want to move that for information? Councillor Jessamine, all in favor? Carried. And this will end our public portion of our meeting. So thank you everybody for listening. And can I have someone move us into in camera? Councillor Morgan, all in favor? Carried.